In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of counting, but not just counting the way that you did in elementary school, but counting um, the different ways that groups of things can happen together. And in this section, we're counting permutations, which means we're counting the number of orders that we can put things into. And we start with something called the fundamental counting principle. And it says that if something can happen m ways, and another thing can happen n ways, then together they can happen m times n ways. And we'll look at an example to see what this means. So we have a pizza restaurant. And this pizza res restaurant has five types of meat and eight types of vegetables. I want to know how many different pizzas can be made with one type of meat and one type of vegetable. So before we use the fundamental counting principle, let's think about listing out all of the possibilities. We first have to choose our type of meat, and there's one type, two types, three types, four types, five types. And then once I choose this type of meat, I could choose, I have eight different vegetables that I could choose. So there's veggie one, veggie two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So from this first part of this tree, it's called, there's eight possible pizzas that we could make. Type one of meat, and then eight different choices for the veggies. And then we have similar branches coming off of each one of these. So there's five branches first, and then eight branches in the second part. So the total number of pizzas that we can make are five times eight. We basically have to make two choices. In the first choice, we have five meats. In the second choice, we have eight vegetables. The fundamental counting principle says that together we can choose them in a number of ways that we use multiplication to calculate. So next question, how many different permutations are possible for five skiers to finish a race? Let's use the fundamental counting principle. There's five spaces that we need to fill. There's five things that we need to think about. And for this first place coming in at the end of the race, there's five people that could fill it. The fundamental counting principle says, okay, for this second place, we're going to multiply the number of ways that that second thing can happen. Well, the second thing can happen four ways because we already picked one. And then three, two, one. So there are five different people that could finish first, four that could finish second, three that could finish third, two fourth, and only one person that could finish in last place. And the fundamental counting principle says we multiply these together and we get 120. And 120 would be another way to say five with an exclamation point. This is called a factorial. The exclamation point is called a factorial. And what it tells us to do is to multiply this number by every integer less than it until you hit 1. So we say 5 factorial is equal to 120. Similar question. How many ways can 5 skiers place 1st, 2nd, and 3rd? Pause the video and try to answer this question. For this one, I hope you recognize that there's only three spaces we need to fill. There's first place, second place, and third place. First place, second, third. How many people can get first place, theoretically? Well, five could. How many people then could get come in second? There's four left that haven't crossed the finish line. Then once second place is decided, there are three people to choose from. So five times four times three, which is 60. So these are the permutations of five things put into groups of three. And there's actually a formula for this, NPR, NPR. Um, N is the total group size, or the total number of things we're choosing from. It's the big group. R is how many things I want to put into order. And this formula says that we can calculate those orders by taking n factorial, the whole group size times like 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 
divided by n minus r, that quantity factorial. So I have an example, 5p2. 5p2 is going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial. So that's 5 factorial over 3 factorial. And 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. And the 3, 2, 1s will cancel, leaving us with 5 times 4, or 20. And pretty much all calculators have a button for permutations. It's a matter of finding and learning how to use this button on yours. Um, usually you're not going to have to use this formula, but it's useful and important to know what it means. So, example, I recorded seven songs and I'm choosing five of them to put on my new album. If you didn't know that about me, album drops next week. How many arrangements are going to be possible? How many different albums could I have produced with this? Well, the question here is what 7P5? Or this is sometimes written as a P with a 7 and a 5 there. Or sometimes it's written as P parentheses 7 comma 5. Um, I'm going to do this without my calculator, just for a little bit of fun, because I, I love this kind of stuff. So 7 factorial, the first number is the total group size, divided by 7 minus 5 factorial. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 2 factorial, 2 times 1, So we're left with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And here's how I'm going to multiply this without a calculator. 7 times 6 is 42. 5 times 4 is 20. 42 times 20 is 840. So I could produce 840 different albums. There you go. Permutations. Permutations means orders. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen.